Hello everyone, I'm CP Balois. We're back again to the next chapter in my slasher experience from book to movie. Uh, last time I talked a little bit about what is planning for, how my book is becoming a movie and we're going to be chronicling that. This episode, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my history for those that don't know me or haven't followed me on social media, um, what's got me into writing and why I write what I do. Um, to just start at the earliest part is I learned to read through comic books. Um, the school books were boring, reading The Dog Climbs Up the Hill, you know, John picked up the pepper type thing that just bored the, you know, crap out of me. And my dad, you know, figured I'd need something more. So he actually took, went to the Hamburg newsstand in town over next, nearby where I lived. And we got a bunch of comic books, Scrooge McDuck, Mickey Mouse, Spider-Man, just a whole collection of them. And he taught me to read through that. He sat down with me, he'd read them to me, he'd read them with me. And that got me into it. And within probably a few months, I was actually one of the you know, best readers in the class at that point. It really got me in the door and I... Haven't looked back since. I love the classics like Treasure Island, Robinson Crusoe, Stephen King's one of my favorite authors. Um, Mark Twain is my favorite author. I just love his tongue-in-cheek satire and just poking fun to things. I love to do similar aspects in my stories. Um, but for me, reading was always about escaping. I like to look at it just, you know, as a kid, we got to, you know, go into a different world, another universe, live a different life, whatever. So we could always just escape into it. And we wouldn't have to worry about worrying about our homework or chores or what kind of trouble might have caused that's going to get me grounded the next day. Don't have to worry about any of that. It was pretty cool and, you know, my own little world there. I read during lunch periods, study halls, whatever. Anytime I could, I'd read any book, comics, whatever I'd get my hands on. That's basically why I got into writing. I always would see something. I'd be like, I like that story, but what if you did this to it? Or what if I do this my own version of that? Or just different things. Um, I like stereotypes. I play up the stereotypes. I like turning them on their ear sometimes just for fun. And for me, when I started writing, it's just like a kid playing. I say all the time in interviews or where aren't anyone talk to any writers that for us as adults, writing is our time to play. We can be that little kid again that's out back playing in the sandbox or in the dirt with our matchboxes, our action figures, whatever. You know, we can just do that again. And that's, that's what writing is. We open up our own world, our own, you know, sense of belonging, if you will. Um, so, was, you know, that's when I got into writing around 2010. I actually started getting it seriously before I was just dabbling here or there. <clears throat> and, you know, since then, I have 18 published books. Um, my slash experience was made an animatic, you know, like a short, you know, think, <clears throat> excuse me, about 10 minute you know, video. It's on YouTube. Um, and this, and this channel, as a matter of fact. And it's, it's just a really fun experience. I met a lot of great people through it, throughout the years of writing. And a lot of people I found uh, believe in the same thing. It's about escapism. Some have a message, some want this to be said, and that's fine. For me, I just like, you know, just escaping somewhere. I want to give back to other people. So all my books are stories that I find kind of fun. If I'm writing something and I don't feel it's engaging, I don't think the readers will. It's just how my mindset works. I like to tell the stories. I like to have fun with it. And they're never going to be something you're going to find at a college, like a Hemingway, where it's, this is how you write this, or this is how you do that. You know, they're for fun. I know that. I accept that. I promote that. I write for fun. I want people to read them for fun. I want them to enjoy themselves. I'm not, you know, trying to send a message or anything like that. You know, to each their own. Um, and when that's, with that in mind, that's also led me to the horror genre being one of my favorite genres. As a kid, I grew up watching the Universal Monster movies. My mom was always worried I was going to have nightmares. My dad told her I wouldn't have nightmares. I know the difference between reality and movies. That was right until the original Fright Night, 1985-86. saw it on TV. Amanda Bierce had a mouthful like prana teeth. That scared the crap out of me all night long. I had to watch a few hours of DuckTales to get over it. Um, but I went from that. I remember one night, first thing I really saw in the slasher genre, and this will date my age, but we had a thing called Select TV that was pretty much a precursor to, ca to Cable. And these other movies like Beastmaster, Conan Barbarian, things like that that I'd run home from school to watch. And one late night, my dad's friend got done with work. He's worked second shift. He stopped by talking to my dad. And they're sitting there, they're just talking. And I'm on the floor, I'm playing my Transformers and my Lincoln Logs. And I kind of look over, and it was Friday Part 3. And I, until then, I was kind of watching it, but I wasn't watching it. You know, because I, like, I, kind of, I could pretty much watch how I wanted to watch. You know, if I had questions, I could ask, that type of thing. It was really just, you know, be my own person and, you know, explore things. And I just happened to look up at the one point, or actually, if I remember right, that's actually when I had Jetfire crash into a log cabin and, just, and they all fell apart. It's, it's, it's fun. Anyway, and it's like about that point, I looked up, and that was at the part, part towards the end when Jason crushes one character, Rick's skull, and the movie's made for 3D. 
and the eye just pops out and comes and just sticks in the camera like right there for a second. It's just for me, it was just so cool the special effect. You know, I love figuring out how they do that stuff, and that effect alone caught me. And that's when I started watching the genre more. I'm a huge Friday 13th fan. I love Halloween. You know, um, Nightmare on Elm Street. One of my favorite movies of all time is April Fools, which is the only slasher where no one dies. It's a very awesome premise. I so love it. And you know, I joined a lot of that when I was writing the book. You know, because I always want to do my own version of it. I always, do my, I always did horror before, like psychological horror, like short stories and things like that. And this is my, I wanted to do something of a slasher. I wanted to, you know, put my name in it, so to speak. And so I took pretty much everything, everything, and everything inspired me. I took, you know, from people I knew, people I, you know, I've seen, you know, things I've seen on TV, things I've seen there, you know, this and that, you know, but I've read, and it kind of all comes together. Like any author will tell you, we draw inspiration from anything and everyone. And everything came together for the first book, The Slasher Experience. And again, it's based off of, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a camp that's a who done it type of camp that is based on the movie at the time, The Slasher. And has the actual actor that was a killer there to portray his role as everyone tries to figure out who's, you know, who's the next victim, how to stop him, things like that. Um, and for me, it was just a fun escape. And I can say that I got a... So you can say sadistically uh, the fact that one friend of ours we're talking about it during NaNoWriMo that year um, love her she's a great person but I may have surprised her away from wanting to be a camp counselor again she did say that how true it is it's up to, and that's up to her but I have no reason to disbelieve her another friend of ours um, said for a while she was scared to go on nature walks with her dog where she lived so I feel I did my purpose like I, I gauged them enough I grabbed a hold of them enough and that's what the fun part. You know, the day could get into the stories that much. And I tried to do all my stories. And uh, my hope is that when we're, as we're going into the, making this into a movie, that that's going to be the same type of thing. It's going to be something people are going to look at. It's going to be fun. It's going to remind them of the old 80s slasher film where the effects were practically done. Like Tom Savini style. I love his work. Um, you know, where it's like, yeah, it's gory, but, you know, it's realistic. It's not, like, overkill. It's not this and that, but also with elements of, you know, so psychological horror comedy satire and i love characters that are major you know wise guys that have you know, have no filter or just you know never believe in a bad not, never a bad time for a joke so i have a lot of that in there and that's what i hoping. hope it translates well to the screen um but that's currently you know our goal and that's what we're working forward to and i just want to thank you for joining us just, you know this episode if you could subscribe and please like and share this we can use all the support we can get on it Appreciate everything you guys do to, for us. Appreciate every, every book you've ever bought, every time I read, and every time you sat down and actually listened to me just babble on about nothing. Thank you so much, and have a great night, everyone. Bye.